Hello! Welcome back to Baking from Books. I am Callan, a reference librarian who loves books and trying to make things. Uh, emphasis on trying. Today I'm trying to make Day at the Beach Jello Aquariums, and it is loosely inspired by The Mermaid's Daughter by Anne Claycomb. This is a book from 2017, and it's a retelling of the Little Mermaid, the original fairy tale, not the Hans Christian Andersen, not the Disney version, the Hans Christian Andersen version. And in the original version, the mermaid has constant pain on her human legs, and in addition to not being able to speak, and the only way to be released from the curse is to kill either her lover or herself. In this version, the curse has been passed down to the mermaid's female descendants, who have all killed themselves except the most recent, Kathleen, who has become a successful opera singer uh, despite her constant pain, and she's in a happy relationship with her girlfriend, Harry. She and Harry are trying to get to the bottom of her condition, and they start to learn about the curse, and they try to find a way around it, even while it's inspiring Kathleen's greatest work in opera. I love this book, among other reasons, because it's a love letter to opera, and it explores the way music can express our deepest feelings and our needs and help us heal ourselves. So, the power of music, and I just love that that's an aspect of it. I chose this recipe <laughs> because it captures how important the ocean is to Kathleen, uh, but it also lightens the mood a little bit. As you could imagine, uh, a cursed existence full of pain expressed through opera is pretty melodramatic, and it can be a little bit dark at times, uh, but this recipe captures the joy that Kathleen and the mermaids feel in the ocean. So I'd like to credit two different blogs for this recipe. Uh, I combined different uh, ocean jello recipes from the blog Simple and Seasonal and We're Calling Shenanigans. I just thought that it would be better if you put them together to make one thing, so hopefully it'll work. I'd like to thank both of those blogs for their recipes and do go check them out. So I've called this recipe Day at the Beach Jello Aquariums. The idea is that there's um, gravel or sand at the bottom of your aquarium, and then the water with fish in it, and then the beach is on the top, and it's a pretty easy recipe to make, although there are parts that get a little tedious, like this first part. You take Lifesaver gummies. I've got several different varieties to try today, so I have neons and color collisions, uh, which I'm very excited about and sours. I don't know how that would work with Jell-O, so I'm very excited to try some of these. It all depends on what kind of vibe you want for your aquarium gravel at the bottom. I'm going to start with the neons because I think that captures sort of an aquarium vibe. And you could make one big aquarium in a larger container. Um, for ease of sharing with people, I'm going to use smaller plastic cups because one of the blogs imagined this as something you'd serve out at a party. So I'm going to have my little plastic cups here. And what you do is you take your Lifesavers gummies and you take a pair of scissors. Do plan on washing these scissors or using kitchen scissors and you just cut the Lifesaver gummies up into little pieces and arrange them in the bottom of your containers. So you cut them up until you have something like this covering the bottom of your container uh, to make your like aquarium gravel. And then you make the jello according to the package directions. In my experience, it's easier to make the jello in a larger container and then pour it into the smaller cups that you're going to be serving with. So the first thing you have to do is boil two cups of water. You put your jello in whatever container you're going to be making it in. Like so. Obviously you want berry blue jello or some kind of blue jello so that it captures the ocean feel. Unless you want to capture a polluted ocean or a muddy river, in which case you could pick orange or one of the other colors. Up to you. So you take your jello and you add the two cups of boiling water to it. I am playing fast and loose with the measurements as always. Ooh. And you just stir that up until the jello is completely dissolved. It says about two minutes.
Never has two minutes felt so long. Once your boring part is done, or you say to yourself, that's probably close enough to dissolved, you then take two cups of cold water, which I also have not measured out, and you pour that into stirring to combine it with the boiling mixture. So once you've got your jello fully mixed up, you then pour it directly into the containers with your Lifesaver pebbles cut up in the bottom. And good luck trying to evenly distribute it between the multiple containers that you have. Do it over a sink because this container does not pour well. Do something with a spout if you're doing it yourself. That's my recommendation. So that was a learning curve to figure out how to pour out of that container. Uh, don't do it my way. Uh, but I did eventually get them poured. Uh, so they look something like this. You can see the aquarium pebbles through the bottom. And then you just put them in the fridge for a few hours to set. Coming back before they're all the way solidified, uh, but mostly firm. As always, to my lovely coworkers who may be watching, I promise I will clean up the mess that I made when I spilled jello all over the floor. So, don't worry, I'm cleaning up after myself. We're back. It's been about four hours, so the jello is just about set up now. Um, so you have these little cups and they're all set, and now it's time to make the aquarium part by adding the fish. So, I have, they're not Swedish fish brand, but they are little gummy fish in several different colors. So what you do, you would use a different knife than this, but you take a knife and you cut a slit in the top of your jello down into far enough that you want the fish to sit. So if you want it to be part way down, you make sure to cut your slit down to almost the bottom. Then you take your fish and you slide it into the slit and down to where you want it to sit. Like so and you just repeat until you have all of your aquariums complete with fish. Here's a close-up view of the results. You can see we've got two little fish in the aquarium. This one, I went for sort of a mermaid vibe with the tail coming up. Now it's time to make the beach part of the day at the beach. So for that, you'll need Nilla wafers and you could use a food processor for this step, or my way, I'm gonna try and just work out some frustrations, because you need them crushed into the sand that will make the beach. Crush it up as much as you like, until it can be sand on your beach. There may be a few boulders on my beaches, but I've got it mostly crushed down into sand. So then, take one of your aquariums, give you the close-up view here because you don't want to cover the whole top you just want to make a bit of a crescent of sand along one side something like that so you can still see the ocean because the final step to complete your aquarium you take some whipped cream it said Cool Whip, but I think it's easier to be able to steer it like this, and you make foam along the side of your sand. Okay, uh, it's a very stormy day at the beach because that is more foam than I was gonna do, but that's the idea. I got a little better as I went along, so there's the stor very stormy day at the beach, but uh, my later attempts have small foam that's more in proportion to the sand on the beach. You don't want to leave them sitting too long, I don't think, because the crushed up Nilla wafers on the top will get more soggy and soak into the jello, but um, they'll sit for a little while and they're a perfect thing to serve out at a party or after the opera, I suppose. Although I imagine it more as you finish this book and it's very heavy and emotional and then you eat this snack to just lighten up your mood a little bit. And that's it. It's really all it takes. It's a quick and simple recipe and it comes out pretty tasty and it would be very fun to do and share uh, with kids or with friends. So if you make it yourself, comment below with any tips you have for me and always share your results with us as a library. If you do it yourself, we would love to hear from you and any feedback you have on this recipe or uh, things I could have done differently. And if you have any suggestions for recipes in the future, uh, do let us know. We'll see you again soon for another edition of Baking from Books. But in the meantime, happy reading, happy baking.